Hey everyone, welcome to Relatively Refined. My name is Paula. In today's video, my sisters and I are going to share with you the gifts that we have thrifted for each other. We did this last year and there was an element of surprise in it where we had you try to guess which sister was receiving which gift. But this year, we're doing a little bit different. We're gonna show you what we've gotten each other and then talk a little bit about how we are wrapping it up for our sisters. I hope this gives you some inspiration about thrifting gifts. It really is not taboo anymore. Pre-loved gifts are the best kind of gifts. You're saving the planet and you can often find things that are much better quality than what you can get today. So stay tuned and we will do our thrifted gift exchange. Hey everyone. Last year, my sisters and I started a new tradition where we thrifted a Christmas gift um, and sent it to each other. I um, mean, you actually got to see in the video where we opened the gifts that we got from each other. And some of you might have even played along and tried to figure out which sister was giving which gifts to whom. So this year we are doing it again, only this um, time I'm going to show you the gifts that I purchased before I've sent them. It's early December and um, as you can see, I haven't really even started my decorating yet. I'm waiting for this weekend when I think I'll have a little more time to devote to that. Um, so I'm going to show you what I picked up for Paula. I got this at a yard, it was like an estate sale. They, were, they had sold their house and they were moving to California. And it was in the fall, maybe September, October. And I found these adorable little mini teapots. You can see this one. This one is a beet. And it has the little lid that comes off, the little leaf. And they're just decorative, I think. But you know Paula, she has talked much about her love of miniatures and, of course, her love of tea. So when I saw these two little teapots, the little um, uh, uh, beet, not radish, but beet, and this tiny little scallion or onion one with a ladybug lid on top. I'll see if I can. I just couldn't resist. I'm not sure what she'll do with them, but they just reminded me so much of her. I thought that will be the perfect thriftness gift for Paula. What I got for Patty um, was in one of her thrift hauls, she had found some of those little salt um, finger salt dishes. They're tiny little glass salt dishes, and our dad used to collect them, and on fancy or occasions or dinners, holiday dinners, he had enough to put around to each place setting. So everyone had their own little salt cellar. And she had picked up some, I think at a, probably a local thrift store, and she noted that they were kind of big and she wondered if they needed some spoons. Um, so I, at that same um, moving sale, I found, oh, this, they had like a vintage section and I found these little tiny spoons. They could be that they're demitasse spoons, I'm not really sure, but they are tiny little silver spoons. And I thought, oh, those will be perfect for her to put with her salt cellars that needed the spoons. And this came with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. These little tiny spoons. I don't remember what they were, but I don't think they were very much, nor were the, the teapots. Um, but when I saw them, I thought immediately of Patty. It was probably shortly after she had done her thrift haul with those salt cellars. So I did pick up those, and those will be her thrift miss gift for 2023. And for each of them, I did make something that I will stick in the box when I send it down. And um, I believe Paula, in her video Christmas tour, house tour last year, had mentioned a very old vintage Christmas ornament that was our parents, from a, a very early on, maybe from their first, when they first got married. And it was a wooden red sled with white runners. And um, I have I remember that being one of the few decorations that we had. Paula mentions it in her video. And I found these little metal sleighs. 
or sleds um, at the dollar store. And they were they weren't painted. They were like a a plain um, silver. I painted the seat part red, and I painted the um, the runners white. And then the other thing that I remember, and I know Paula mentions it, is there were always had these little tiny mini packages in it. And I ordered, I found some online, and I ordered these little packages and stuck them in here, hung a ribbon on it, and each of them will get one as an ornament for their tree. And it really does resemble the vintage one that was our parents' early on Christmas decoration. And I'm sure all of us have very vivid memories of it decorating our childhood home. So I will send each of them one of these, and I also made one for my mom, so I will be sure and send her one too. So the next part of this video is I'm going to show you a couple, um, how I wrapped, how I gift wrapped the, these uh, gifts a little bit differently. The spoons were so tiny that I simply put them in a very sweet little bag. Um, and the teapots were a little bit bigger, and so I'm going to show you just how I wrap them. That's kind of a fun way and an inexpensive way to wrap presents and add a little bit of pizzazz to that. Okay, so because I am still in my sling, my wrapping skills um, were not worthy of showing on the camera. So I'm going to show you the finished product, but I'll walk you and talk you through what I did. So I started with just plain brown craft paper and I wrapped a box. I put them in a square box in, with craft paper. And I took some twine, just some Dollar Tree twine. And instead of wrapping it in a bow, I just wrapped it in a pattern like that and taped it on to the back. And I had um, some stamps and some ink. And I really liked this old sort of vintage car. And all I did was stamped it and then hot glued a little mini tree on top of the car. So I've done this for a couple of years now and I really like the way it looks. It gives the, it gives the present a little bit of sort of 3D-ness um, and it just looks really cute. And then I had ordered um, these extra fine tip white pens um, because some of the um, labels that I'm going to be using for some additional gifts are black and so I wanted to be able to write on them. So I decided to just add, to try them out, and I put a little snow on the bottom and to Paula. And that is her thriftmas present and I will have to drop that in the mail very soon. And before I wrap up this part of the video, I want to share with you um, two things. The first thing is, uh, speaking of wrapping paper, is our grandfather on our mother's side, Grandpa Barry, used to work in an old, in a paper mill, and they made Christmas wrapping paper for some of the big um, department stores, like in Boston and New York. And somehow or other, I was lucky enough to get a roll of that vintage paper. I think when my parents sold their house down the road from me, uh, and they I was helping them clean out some stuff. I probably saw that and said, I will take that because they certainly weren't going to take it to Florida with them. So I'm going to show you this huge roll of vintage wrapping paper that our grandfather made in his paper mill. And you can see, it's hard for me to hold this up a little bit, but you can see the vintage candles and the poinsettias. And it's a really huge roll. It will last a long time and I've used it, but I just think it's so cool. First of all, I love the pattern but I love the story behind it even more that, um, that Grandpa Barry made this in his paper mill in Bellows Falls, Vermont, and I still have it and get to wrap presents with it. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is so many of you purchased some of the wooden um, lathe turned trees that my husband made. And I'm gonna share with you some of what he's been working on um, mostly they're, they will be gifts for people here, um, our family and friends and neighbors. But he is, uh, although he's still doing the trees, he decided to try doing some ornaments. And I'm just going to hold up a few of them because I think they're absolutely stunning. And so much so that I'm like, oh, I don't even want to give them away. <laughs> I want to keep them all. But just so you know, so perhaps next year you'll see these on the shop. 
So this is what they look like. I mean, how gorgeous is that? This is the dark wood one. I mean, they're absolutely stunning. And he drilled a little hole so we could hang it with a little bit of uh, velvet ribbon. This is a green ribbon. And there's a lot of different shapes. This one is simply round, like a ball. It has a little different color ribbon. And this one, another different shape, but very, very cool. And they look really beautiful hung. It's going to keep showing you because they're fun. This shape. And this is one of my favorite shapes. Just kind of that has that vintage ornament feel to it. And his latest one is came out of a mistake but he turned it into something really beautiful is a little tree so there's a tree ornament and even some pine cone looking ones that could be for fall but also look great on a tree and here's a smaller pine cone so these have been really fun and i just wanted to share that with you because so many of you have commented and purchased those trees and i'm so glad they found really wonderful homes so thank you for that all right until the next video bye i was just getting ready to wrap up some gifts that i got for my sisters and i thought you might like to see what i got them before they get wrapped up I wanted to start by destigmatizing the idea of giving <clears throat> pre-loved or thrifted gifts. I think it's a fantastic idea for so many reasons, but in my opinion, I think it shows that you are really putting a lot of thought and effort into something because finding pre-loved, just that perfect item, I think is a really special way to show somebody that you care it's very thoughtful it's good for the planet and let's be honest things that were pre-loved or vintage items are often just better made they're better quality and um, it's also so fun to look in consignment stores and thrift stores and yard sales to try to find that special gift well, i guess my point is that there are no, as far as I'm concerned, hard and fast rules about gift giving. It's really about thoughtfulness and showing someone that you care and appreciate them. It's not about money. It's not about finding, you know, the shiniest new gift. It's really about showing somebody that you appreciate them and you care about them. So all that being said, I had a lot of fun with my sisters this year. I'm going to start with Kathleen because I've had her gift the longest. Um, I got this at a thrift store and it is a little serving, I guess it's like a little cheese plate and it has a um, spreader and it has, this will probably be reversed in the camera, but it has the letter H, which is my sister's, the first letter of her last name. So I thought this would be a great gift for her, not just because of the H, but Kathleen really likes to entertain. I think she is, um, she is a very loyal person. So she's had friends for a very long time and she really enjoys having friends over and she and her husband are empty nesters. So I think they particularly enjoy having neighbors, friends, uh, in for visits and I thought this was a great size for having some crackers or cheese and I love that it came with a little spreader and it is from the brand mud pie and I have actually purchased new items from mud pie I purchased some linens and I really it's a nice high quality brand so I knew this would be a nice piece for her to have this is new in box and um it is monogram i think she will really enjoy this and i thought she should have it for the holidays because i do know she likes to entertain and have friends over and if she doesn't use this with friends it's a nice small piece that she and her husband can enjoy some crackers and cheese 
or just some little snacks on. And I think it's fun to have, I'm a big fan of monogramming. So I think it's fun to have something that's personalized, monogrammed, and it just makes it special when you bring that piece out. The other things I picked up for her were just these two napkins. These are two linen napkins. They are brand new. There are just two of them, but again, it is at home right now, just Kathleen and her husband. And I thought this really spoke to her. Let me see if I can get this into the camera. This is very simple design. And if you've seen Kathleen's style in her home, she is a very much her style is a very Scandinavian look. It's a little bit of Danish modern, Scandinavian. She has a lot of white, a lot of simple, and a lot of natural elements. And I just thought these would be so pretty on her table or even opened up with the centerpiece on. And I thought they were just the right uh, look for her. Now, I don't know that these are vintage. I do know that I got them at a charity restore, uh, charity thrift store, excuse me. <clears throat> and they tend to have this particular store has really nice linens. And I just thought that was so sweet. They are embroidered, so it's raised, it's not painted on. And I just think that's a sweet, um, just a sweet little addition to the package. And I think this will be a really fun package to put together. I can roll these up or tie them on top, I'm not sure. But I think that's a beautiful gift and I think she will enjoy that. Paula, um, this will be of no surprise to you. Paula, I did not get her glassware, um, but Paula loves vintage tablecloths. And actually Kathleen does too, so I, I should say, but Paula has been wanting to collect vintage tablecloths and she laments the fact that she has a small round table and she's hoping to get a bigger table in the future. And I hope so, because this is quite a big tablecloth. It is oval. So it can be amended in the center so that it would fit. But let me show you. This is a gorgeous vintage tablecloth. It has poinsettias on it. Really sweet detailing. So I don't know if I showed this in a previous haul, but this is definitely um, something I've had also for a while. So now that I think about it, I have had these for quite some time. And I just thought it was such nice detailing. It also has this really pretty green, um, green detailing on this edge. And, and then the red trim. So just really cute and sweet. It is large, so she'll have to work with that. But I just think that is so festive and it is so Paula. <laughs> this is so Paula. She is going to, I think she's going to love this. I just don't think there's much more vintage than poinsettias. And I can see this on her table with some pretty, um, with some pretty dishes. This would also go great with plaid, which I know she loves. And I think that you could do some plaid accents with this. I think I could see some of her pretty glassware being used and her flatware. So I think she will enjoy this. I would pull it out to show you, but it is very, it is huge. So I'll just sort of give you a, like a quarter slice of it. Um, but it's oval and it is in perfect condition. I have gone through it. There are no stains and I did wash it and launder it and it is ready for her to put on her table. There's another reason I need to get these out. And then to go on her tree, this will also be no surprise. You probably saw this in my one of my recent hauls. I got these two ornaments and this one I am giving to Paula. It is a little red transferware teapot ornament. Isn't that so cute? And there's just so many things that remind me of Paula about this. She loves all things tea and teapot, all tea accoutrement she loves. She loves transferware and particularly the red or pink transferware. So I just could not resist. This has to go to her. And I love, love, love to gift ornaments. 
Ornaments to me are the, the perfect gift because they don't take up a lot of space. So it's not like you're giving something to somebody that they're gonna have to figure out where to put. It just goes right on the tree. And in my house, ornaments are a lot like going through, down memory lane and each one tells a story. And I think that this one, when she pulls it out each year, she can think of, of our channel, of our viewers. And I think it's just a nice, sweet reminder of that. And if she doesn't want to put it on a tree, I was thinking this would also be really cute just sitting on a plate, um, kind of like a, just like a figurine. And I thought it would be cute in her little coffee area or tea area and, you know, or on a platter. There's a myriad of uses and hopefully she will enjoy it and it will adorn her home in some way, shape or form. I think sometimes how you package up the gift is as important as the gift itself. And I could not resist this plaid wrapping paper because again, we're mad for plaid. I picked this up at the Hobby Lobby and I really like a nice thick wrapping paper. This has the grids in the back and I just thought it was the perfect wrapping paper for my sisters. It is classic and timeless just like they are. And I love that it had traditional colors such as green and red, but it also had black, which is kind of the color that I'm working with this year. So um, incidentally, this gift that I'm wrapping, which is the little platter for my sister Kathleen, the plastic on top of it, the plastic packaging was dusty and I just wiped it with an alcohol wipe and it was shiny just like brand new. So you can just buy those little alcohol wipes from the drugstore and just wipe across the clear plastic and it really took all of the dirt and um, dust off of it and it looks like a brand new package. To make the packages special, I'm going to embellish them with these cinnamon applesauce ornaments that I made. I think those will be so pretty tied on. And I have three different ribbon selections. I have a black satin ribbon, which I think is perfect for this um, wrapping paper, a thinner red velvet ribbon, and a very wide green velvet ribbon and my plan is to layer these to create a really beautiful appearance and a classic elegant look almost like plaid itself after playing around i settled on the combination of the wide green ribbon as a base with the thinner red ribbon on top of it for Kathleen's package and for Paula's I used a just the simple black satin ribbon and of course I tied on my applesauce cinnamon ornaments the green velvet string on that worked perfectly and just made for a beautiful package and now I need to get these packages put in boxes and shipped out to my sisters so that they can enjoy them this holiday season all right, well, I have shared in a previous video some of the things that I'm getting each of my sisters, but if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to share them again here, and I'll also link that video where I found these items um, in the description box. So, first things first, each of my sisters is going to be receiving a bottle of homemade vanilla extract. I started making this back in June because it takes about six months of sitting for it to be fully ready. So I will be sending each of them and my mother a bottle of homemade vanilla extract. Now for my sister Kathleen, I am going to be sending her these really cute little uh, tea light holders. I think they would be. You could put a pillar candle, a small pillar candle, or some tea lights in them, and they are homemade pottery. And I think that she will love these. They go with the aesthetic of her home and that just very homey, homemade, almost Scandinavian look. And I think she will really love these. And I thrifted these for probably um, either a dollar each or a dollar for the pair. I can't exactly remember. It was a while back, but I thought they were so pretty. 
And then also for my sister Kathleen, I thrifted two mugs for her. First, this vintage Santa mug with him on skis, and she and her family do a lot of skiing, so I thought she would appreciate that, and she does love vintage items. And then also this mug, which is a very Scandinavian also looking to me, and so I thought she would also appreciate this. Here's Hazel. She's jumping up to say hi. Hi, Hazel. So those are the gifts that I am sending to my sister Kathleen. All right, on to my sister. Hi. <laughs> you want in on the action? Come here, sit down. Good girl. For my sister Kat, uh, Patty, I thrifted this really cute table runner. And I think the colors will go perfectly with her gold, black, and silver color scheme this year. It's very petite, something she can use on her coffee bar, and it is handmade. And this was also just a dollar, so I could not leave that behind. So that will be heading out to her. And then finally, for, for Patty, of course, in addition to the vanilla extract, I found two books for her that I think she will really enjoy. This first one is called Traditional Style. And it is all, you know, very much her aesthetic. And I will show you some footage of the pictures inside this video and insert some clips of that as well. And then the second book that I thrifted for my sister Patty is this book and it's called Ethan Allen Style. And Ethan Allen is a Vermont-based furniture company. And again, this is very much... Uh, Patty's aesthetic when it comes to home decor. And I'll show you some footage of the interiors that are shown in this book. I think both of these books will be something that she can put on her coffee table, something she can sit down with a good cup of tea and thumb through at night or in the afternoon and just give her lots and lots of inspiration. All right, let's take a look at what's inside this traditional style book. I really think Patty will love this. It is full of some beautiful color photographs, lots of great information and inspiration. Gorgeous front hallway. Just such a fun book to look through in the evenings, as I said. Or on a cozy afternoon. I really think that she's going to enjoy this book. Now let's take a look at the Ethan Allen style book. This is a hardcover book and I just love the inside cover. Looks like somebody's design project in process with the paint swatches and the drawing then maybe the wallpaper or the fabrics. And again, this one is just chock-a-block full of some great inspiration. Beautiful photographs, lots of wonderful information about the Ethan Allen style and their roots in classic and traditional European and American design. So pretty. So I really think that Patty will enjoy looking through these books. So those are the gifts that I am going to be giving with my, to my sisters. So let me share with you how I'm going to be wrapping them. All right, here is a look at what I have to choose from in terms of wrapping paper for my sister's gifts. And then I also have a whole bunch of ribbon. I loved this beautiful kind of green paper. It's got some red and white in it, some holly leaves, so pretty, very beautiful. Then there's this paper, which I absolutely love. It looks almost to me like wallpaper really beautiful kind of that sagey green or a um, blue green color really lovely and then finally over here um, of course because i do love plaid i have some plaid wrapping paper 
So what I am thinking is possibly using this wrapping paper for my sister Patty's gifts and then this one for Kathleen's. Now, in terms of Kathleen's, I'll probably wrap this one up maybe with a bright red bow. And then I was thinking possibly on Patty's, I'll pair it with this plaid ribbon and see how that looks. So let me get started wrapping and I will show you how it all turns out or if I make any changes to it. All right, here is how the packages turned out. For my sister Kathleen, I ended up going with this beautiful holly berry and pine sprig paper in that lovely shade of green, sort of a blue green. I tied it with a beautiful red satin ribbon. And then I added a package topper. And that is simply just a salt dough ornament that I made. And I will have a video coming out about those and tied that with another satin ribbon and attached it to the top of the package. And I think that turned out just lovely. And then over here is Patty's package. I chose for her that wrapping paper that reminded me of a beautiful wallpaper or even a silk print. It's just so pretty. And I tied her package up with a tartan ribbon. And I think that the tartan ribbon plays off so nicely against the ethereal quality of that wrapping paper. And she also got a package topper. She got that gingerbread boy. And I think these packages turned out just beautiful. And I need to get them in boxes and mail them out and head, head to the post office and get them in the mail to my sisters. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel out. It lets YouTube and more importantly, lets us know that you're enjoying the content we're putting out. We hope you're having a wonderful holiday season and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.